Hey guys, Primal Chaos here. I'm, I'm a big fan of music. In fact, I'm, I'm a fan of just about every genre of music that there is. Uh, but there are a few genres that embarrassingly, I don't have a very strong working knowledge of. And one of those is sort of like the metalcore, hardcore sort of sort of scene. Um, and I figured the best way to sort of, to develop my, my musical proclivities is to jump in with both feet and and review some popular songs from those genres so um if you're looking at this chances are you're a fan of some of these bands and you know i, I want you to come on the journey with me and maybe educate me a little bit on on what i'm missing what i don't know um i'm going into this completely blind completely cold i know some band names and things like that obviously you can't be in the industry without or, or a fan of the industry even without hearing some names seeing some t-shirts and stuff like that but where these bands stand as artists is, is a complete mystery to me. So come on the journey with me. Um, today I'm going to be looking at Parkway Drive, uh, as I know that a lot of my friends who are into the hardcore and metalcore scene that, you know, that's obviously, they're obviously a big deal. Um, and I have no idea about any of their tracks. Basically all I did was went on YouTube, typed in Parkway Drive and the first video clip that came up is this one Vice Grip. That's all I know about it. So I'm going into this cold uh, and yeah, we're going to check it out. Let's take a look. Nice. Airplane grab it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you gotta love the tried and tested video in front of like a, a plane or something like that. <laughs> all right let's stop there okay first of all this isn't what i expected and i suspect that this isn't an exceptional example of this band's typical work um this sounds almost like hard rock more than anything um it's interesting i just want to go back and hear that initial riff again because that was pretty solid i love that gallopy feel that's so iron maiden you know what i mean Great mix, nice and punchy. I mean, look, that, that just shows just good songwriting ability. You know, like the essentially the riff that they're playing and that melody, that galloping rhythm, um, it's just memorable, you know? Like you can, you can hum along to that after you've heard it one time, you know? Um, and I suspect that when that fires up at concerts, it'll whip everybody into a frenzy because they know that something that's coming um and again i suspect this is a little bit more sort of hard rock than their typical stuff um it might be a nice reprieve from the solid aggression that i, I as i understand these sort of bands sort of usually put out there um that's really interesting it's just it's hooky hooky as hell i like it I did not picture gang vocals being a part of this at all. <laughs> yeah! Just, I can just see them all in the studio around the microphone. Just, yeah! <laughs> That's so cool. Um, again, I love the guitar tones. Um, you know, it, it's, it reminds me a lot of um, late, 80, late 80s, early 90s sort of guitar sounds. And you can see by the instruments they're playing, there's a lot of influence there, whether they know it or not. Um, these dudes are obviously a lot younger than me, but, um, yeah, there's, there's a, there's a cutting edge to the tone, the high gain sort of sound that you sort of, it's indicative of, of that era of hair metal, heavy metal. Um, and with, with music like this, with complex rhythms and complex riffs, uh, little idiosyncratic melodies within the, within the chords, the power chords and stuff like that, you need that hard edginess and that sharp attack to cut through otherwise you're just going to hear a bunch of waffle and noise so 
Um, it's a, cl a pretty clean mix, actually. It's it's interesting. Uh, everything sort of has its place and it stands out. Now, the vocals um, are kind of what I expected, although there's a clarity to it that I didn't expect. They're, they're quite legible, you know what I mean? You can really hear what the singer is saying. Um, and that's that's pretty fascinating as well. Cool interlude. <sighs> Am I crazy? I feel like these guys, this is like a joke song. Like, I'm not making fun of the song. It's a great song. Um, and they're doing a great job. But I feel like it's, it's almost like a parody or an homage to a genre rather than something that they would typically do. That's, that's just the vibe I'm getting, you know? Um... It just seems really tongue in cheek. If that's maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I mean, just look at the drum kit. Like I'm seeing just a basic pearl drum kit, no double kick thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I mean, I know that's normal now. You know, with double kick pedals and things like that. But it just like I'm not hearing a lot of intricate drumming and stuff that I sort of suspected I would hear. This is like the Lars Ulrich of metalcore. <laughs> That's not to say the drum is not great. I'm just saying in this instance, it just, it just seems more simplistic than I was expecting. Now, Yep, okay. Now, the one thing I do know about Parkway is that they're from Byron Bay. And, uh, yeah, I figured as soon as I saw a plane, I'm like, there's got to be some skydiving in this. It's just got that vibe. It's such positive lyrics. Hope for the hopeless. Keep the flame alive. It's just, again, I just, I can't shake the feeling it's a parody song, you know? Woo! <laughs> you gotta love that. Here we go. Breakdown. I don't know that you've ever connected as a band unless you've all jumped out of a perfectly good airplane together. Just saying. Oh, great shot. That's some more anthemic gang vocals that sort of just bring home this whole vibe um, of just an anthem. It's a straight up anthem. It's like... It literally seems like a record company executive came to them and said, you know what, guys, you need an anthem for this album. You need something that people are going to respond to. Um, and this is what they did. There's a story actually about, um, there's an Australian band called, uh, called the Screaming Jets. And they had a massive hit in the sort of early uh, to mid nineties. Um, and no, wait, it was Noiseworks. Yeah, sorry, different band, Noiseworks uh kiwi band but still very famous in australia and they there's uh, they had a song called hot chili woman and it was just a punchy pop rock song that just was just it ticked all the boxes and it just topped the charts for eons right turns out it was that situation the record executive came to them and said you guys need to go a little bit more pop you know you need to you know get out there and hit the top 40 and stuff like that and they were so bummed out about that they wrote a joke song called hot chili woman you know and it had all of the hallmarks of just generic pop and turned out to be their biggest hit of all time which um i don't know how i'd feel about that but you know <laughs> that's what this is i feel like that's what this is 
coming back to that rhythm from the start. Yeah, live footage always works. I bet they didn't have to go far to get a whole group of people <laughs> to come on their video clip, to be honest. Nice. Yeah, this is this is genuinely just anthem um, by numbers. You know, they they're literally just dropping back to just the vocals, the punchy sort of single kick, sort of boom, punching the air kind of feel. That's like it's like anthem writing one hundred and one. You know, bands have been doing this since like nineteen eighty two, and probably beyond that. You know. Nice. I mean, parachuting into a gig, it's it's just a a whole death clock thing, right? Like <laughs> I've seen Metal Ocalypse, I know what's up. Time. look if, if there's one thing that i can say um about hardcore and metalcore bands is that thank god you guys are bringing back actual guitar playing so you know i grew up like i was in my formative years like 14 15 years old when um never mind hit and you know so I, I sort of straddled this as a guitar player i started you know when i was about 13 or something playing guitar um and a few years later smells like teen spirit hit and it changed the game everything in music in rock music particularly just overnight just flipped on its head i heard stories of of like hair bands that were hugely successful before that were literally about to fly out on tour and they saw Smells Like Teen Spirit hit like MTV and they called and canceled their tours because everybody knew a fundamental shift had happened. Um, so I, you know, grunge was a thing that happened and it went from very intricate, particularly guitar centric um, music. And it flipped it on its head to where pretty much anybody who could pick up a guitar within a week could learn how to play a Nirvana song, you know, and then, uh, that's not to diminish the 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 capabilities of you know um kurt cobain and and the guys in the band um but it was way more accessible you know before that in order to have a guitar player in a band they had to almost be a virtuoso on guitar um and so what i miss you know having been a guitar player who was influenced by the very end of that hair metal era where everybody was an amazing shredder on guitar um and then falling into you know the grunge era and falling in love with that music too because of its rawness and its realness and lack of pretense um you know uh, the one thing i missed was was the guitar solo you know that because you know there was very rarely a guitar solo in anything from that era and then you know that sort of carried through and it seems like with with hardcore and metalcore the little i know about it is that they're bringing back that guitar wankery you know and and i appreciate that i really do i love that um it's one of those things where they you know everything's cyclic and the cycles just come back around and this is kind of the new incarnation and it's sort of fusing that lack of pretense and and personal image you know like the big hair and the clothes and stuff like that um it's fusing that with with like musical ability that sort of is a step above average you know and I, I really appreciate that. Like towards the end there, you've got harmonized guitar soloing in the outro. 
and things like that. And that's something that's been missing for a really long time. Now, now don't get me wrong. I know hardcore and metalcore and stuff like that have been around for a really long time. Um, I'm talking about sort of in the last decade, you know? Um, but yeah, like this is, it's really interesting. Again, I, I don't know that this is a, a great example of the band themselves. I, I suspected that they'd be much more aggressive, much less anthemic and much, um, much more, look for want of a better word, difficult to listen to as you know, if someone who's got the gentle ears of like, you know, sixties blues inspired rock influence. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, uh, you know, I, I really like that song. I would definitely put that on my playlist for sure. Um, but I think next time I dive in, I might do some more Parkway and I'm going to go for something a little bit more indicative of the genre. So if you guys can suggest in the comments what that might be, as I said, I don't know anything. I suspect if I went back to earlier albums um, that I might find what I'm looking for in that regard. But yeah, this was the first thing that came up. And and you know what? It makes sense because it's definitely more of a pop aesthetic. This is a pop song written by a bunch of guys in a completely different genre. So yeah, but hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Hit subscribe, obviously. Thank you. Uh, if you're stuck around this long, you might want to see some more. So, all right. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you on the next one.